So just while I'm, I'm setting this up, just make yourselves very comfortable. Um, you may want to turn your videos off just in case for the bandwidth and then you can turn them on again a bit later. I really want you to hear my words and I could break up a little bit as well. Okay, so this this image on the screen um, is of one of the white lines that I work with that um, and some of you have been with me to the white line leadership well, the White Lion um, Trust, Global White Lion Protection Trust. And this, I always love starting my um, webinars and meetings with this image because really he does seem like he's praying in this photograph. So just you can either close your eyes or you can just gently rest them on the screen. Make sure that you're feeling very comfortable in your seat. Feel your feet firmly on the ground. And take a deep, long breath in. And slowly breathe out. And on your next in-breath, just become aware of a beautiful rose gold color light. And this light signifies, represents the unconditional love of Mother Nature. And breathe that in, and breathe that into your heart center, your heart space. Fill your heart, fill your lungs completely with that golden light, and then Breathe out, and as you breathe out, just feel your whole body relax. Feel any heaviness or any disquiet, anything that is making you feel anxious, any heartache or pain that you are carrying with you at this moment. See and feel it d dissolve into this rose gold light. Just for this gathering, while we're here, let's just feel all that heaviness and anxieties become transformed into pure, unconditional love. I'll take a few deep breaths like that, and as you're breathing, Become aware of your own unconditional love for all animals and for all of nature in whatever form that may be. And now... We're going to co create, co create a field of unconditional love from your heart space. Send this love out. It's almost like a sphere, a bubble around your heart that just expands and expands throughout your body, clearing and cleaning and connecting you with yourself becoming aware of your own body, and then moving beyond the confines, the boundaries of your own body into the room around you, beyond the room, into your environment. Through this heart field, we connect with other beings. So any of your animal friends who may be close by, invite them to step into this heart field. Expand that field beyond your environment into the streets, the parks, the cities, and feel that connection that you have with all that is, that connection with the trees, the plants, the grasses, the birds, the insects, 
the very soil upon which we walk, the air with which we breathe, the skies, the waters, the mountains, the oceans, the entire planet, feel that connection. When we're in this heart field, there is no separation. We are one, we breathe as one. And in this space, our thoughts, our feelings are felt by others. And we can feel the thoughts and feelings, the experiences of other beings. But while we're in this space, we can still feel and be connected. So I'm going to ask you to stay in this heart field, but feel your feet firmly on the ground. Feel that energy of Mother Earth supporting you in every way, grounding you, connecting you, creating a safe space for you to be true, to be honest, to be awake and aware, to open your hearts and minds in the safe place, in this heart field where all that is, exists vibrates at the frequency of unconditional love. Okay, take your focus back to your breath. Take a few deep breaths in and out. And when you're ready, come back to this gathering. Open your eyes. And let's be present with each other now. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. So just while you sort of Settling into the space, I'm just going to go through the brief agenda, what we're going to cover through these, um, through this time together. So I'm going to be talking quite a bit in the first, first half, and I'm going to ask Janine to kind of step in as well to, to speak a little bit more about a few things that she runs. But basically, I'm going to talk about intuitive anti-species communication, which most people know as animal communication. I'm going to talk about what Animal Talk Africa offers um, students or offers people who want to learn further. If the timing is right, we might have a, a short break um, before we start actually learning how to communicate with an animal friend. And we're focusing on animals um, during the, this time together, although interspecies communication, we can actually communicate with all species. They don't have to be in animal form. And then we're going to have our teacher's beauty and the horse. And Lynn is going to give us some um, feedback after we've done a, a sort of a question and answer session with beauty. And then we're going to do a brief connection with Lily the cat so that you can feel the difference in energies um, between communicating with a horse being and communicating with a cat being. And then there'll be time for questions and answers, and then we'll close. So I'll, I'll explain more as we go along. <clears throat> And the chat will be open, so feel free to ask questions in the chat, although just remember if you're asking questions in the chat, it can be distract distracting um, and we will have time um, to address them afterwards. So we won't answer questions immediately. Okay, so what do you need to be able to communicate with other animals? And Really love, that unconditional love is the key. All you need is to be able to love animals with all your heart. And 
an open heart and an open mind, love connects and fear disconnects. So in my teachings and our teachings, we really work with um, transforming fears because there's often a lot of fear around us. I mean, we're being conditioned by fear throughout our lives, most of us. And love is the only thing that can transform the, the fears and that unconditional love. And I often call it a God love. It's, a, it's mother nature's love. It's a divine love rather than the human love that most of us are familiar with and exposed to, which can come with all sorts of conditions. Um, so it's it really is that true, pure love that connects us all. Being able to communicate intuitively in this way is our birthright. We are born able to do this. I'm sure you've seen babies and children, the way they are able to interact with each other without words and interact with animals. There is no fear until we uh, get it installed in us by our um, concerned parents or by our teachers. And so we've forgotten how to communicate with us because of the fear that's been put onto us. And this whole thing that we have to use our heads and not our hearts, that, you know, that everything has to be proved scientifically before it's accepted. So the world has done, or the Western world, I should say, has done a very good job at shutting down our intuition. Um, and now it's time to wake that up again and start remembering this very ancient knowledge because you know, the ancient indigenous people, the First Nation people, have been doing this since time began for humans on Earth. You know, there's, we know this, and I go into it in the courses, how um, the first people would, the first thing they did in the morning was ask the animals where they were, find out how the land is feeling, to be able to guide them in their day's work. So this is something that is part of our life skill, and it's something that needs to come back to us, um, especially with in the times that we are facing now where the earth feels like it is in crisis mode. So just going through some of the common fears, why people don't want to embrace this, you know, or don't want to believe that animal communication, interspecies communication is a reality. First of all, it's not trusting your own ability. And many people say, oh, well, I know you can do it but I'd never be able to do it. So it's it's really that fear of not being right or you know getting it wrong. Because if you get it wrong, there's great responsibility in this work. And there's a sense of, I don't want to risk, you know, getting things wrong. Um, but with, our, with tuition and practice, you'll be able to see that there's no real wrong and you'll, but you'll be able to, and, identify how information comes to you so that you can be confident um, in this work. Another common fear is, oh no, it's too painful to feel what, what the animals are feeling. And, and I'm not denying that it is painful, but is it too painful to be able to help them? No, it's not too painful because when you get a sense of what those animals are going through and they can tell you what they need to feel better and there's something that you can positively do, then the benefits of that is, be, is to be able to transform that, fa that um, pain and ache and suffering. Sometimes there's situations where you can't physically do anything, but through the communication and what I call the heart work, heart energy achieving real transformation, we can sense and see shifts happening. So it really is such a, it really outweighs, for me, the benefits outweigh all the fears. There is so much joy and peace when we can connect with the animals and nature in this way. It's, yeah, it just takes our stress away. It helps with depression, you know, when, what, all the stuff that us humans are facing in this world, when we are able to connect in with that other being, it can really bring us joy and peace. 
finding the balance in nature. So if you're one that we are bombarded with with horror. I mean, if you, you know, people that go onto social media or news, or even when you're driving down the streets and you see another beautiful landscape has been developed, you know, paved paradise and put up a parking lot. It happens all the time. But when you are connecting with the animals and with nature, you look for the joy. And that's one of the one of the teachings um, that I learned from the lions, actually. The white lions are saying, find the balance. When the fear, when the pain becomes too much, see the joy, because there's always joy. There's joy in the bird song. There's joy in in so much, in your cats curling on your lap. Focus on that, and that expands, um, and that changes. It's also about creating balance within. And again, that's also um, balancing that depression, that, that suffering, that pain that we all feel when we love nature and the animals so much. Um, maybe we don't all feel that. Maybe, maybe um, some of us don't feel that. But people who are very sensitive to the animals and nature will have some form of that in them that they are struggling with. And it really, the animals just love us unconditionally. Nature loves us unconditionally. So to be able to connect with that is completely healing, but it's not just for us. It's to give back as well. It's to assist those that are assisting us. It's a it's a two-way and maybe even a three-way communication, I want to say, because there's something else that we're communicating with um, on a spiritual level. And it's kind of like a divine energy of, of nature, I feel. So if it's all natural, why do you need to study intuitive interspecies communication? Some people, it comes very naturally with and, you know, have been communicating with animals from a very, very young age. And perhaps those people don't need to focus and study um, so hard to get it right. But many of us have had our intuition um, sort of damped down. And I certainly, even though I had a very um, open-minded mother and I was exposed to all sorts of things, meditation when I was 12 years, years old, I still, when I discovered what I was feeling with the animals was something that is recognized as IIC, animal communication, I wanted to learn from somebody who had experienced it because I didn't understand some of the things that I was experiencing. And my teacher, Amelia Kincaid, showed me um, how to understand the feelings that I was getting and how to actually communicate effectively with the other animals. Um, so it really assists me. And then through all my experience and my teaching, I developed this, this course and then I've got so many other people involved and it has expanded. And it just feels like it's a wonderful grounding for people who want to do this professionally. Um, but not only if you want to do it professionally, if you just want to feel confident in um, communicating with others. Obviously, you learn how to understand the needs of other animals, learn how to help animals, understand the human rules and boundaries, which is a is the main um, issues that that animals face. Really, often they don't understand why they're not supposed to dig holes in the garden or, on a greater level, you know, break into break into people's houses and steal their food. I'm talking about baboons now. So it really is about assisting with human animal dynamics on a big scale or on a very small scale. You can pick up um, how animals are feeling physically as well. You know, whether is it bad enough to take your animal friend to the vet or can you just assist? And being able to trust that is um, really important. And that comes with practice. Saying that, talking about vets, it's not a replacement for any veterinary intervention or care. Learning how to live harmoniously with, with all species, that, it, that includes kind of bees and wasps and all sorts of insects, um, the parts of nature that can be quite scary for people, 
and spiders and scorpions and snakes where where I live there's we have every kind of nature <laughs> imaginable and I I love it but some people get very upset about it uh you start understanding yourself you know getting to know yourself well as well as the other beings other other human beings as well as an animal beings um you learn about energy and how it works because we are all energy and this is how we can communicate with other beings is because it's through an energy field an energy frequency and really this is a spiritual journey in these very very important well all time is important i'm sure but it just feels like these it's vital to to acknowledge the spiritual side of life um in these times and it really really helps us and working with animals and nature can bring you on to that spiritual path or if you're already on it just take you in you know deeper i hope that makes sense i'm going to tell you just a little bit about specifically about Animal Talk Africa and what we can offer people. So there's three flagship courses and that's how the academy kind of started with an introduction course. It's all online. It's all online learning. Um, I'm going to talk about each course separately, an intermediate course, and then a practitioner certification where you give case studies. And this year, Ubiquity University partnered with us um, so that we can offer postgraduate degrees. And that's a, that is a first in, in the world. So they are um, university. Saskatchewan um, and someone else in Berlin is there are researchers and PhD students doing theses in um IIC, but to actually be able to get a PhD uh, as this as a subject is a first. We always follow a strict code of ethics, and that's that's really really important. So there is a code of ethics that was written by Penelope Smith, who is kind of the grandmother of animal communication, and we've based our code of ethics uh, along her with with a little bit of um, more added. So here with Ubiquity, you can get masters and PhDs in intuitive interspecies communication, and we can put the link to that in the chat if you'd like to know more about that. So during your the online course, when it's self-paced, so you can start at any time and you can take as long or as short a time as you want to to complete it. While you're enrolled and it's a lifetime enrollment, you will get support from mentors. You get support from a student community, an online community. There's regular student calls that Janine and I host and occasionally one of the, the mentors will, will host regular practice opportunities, and then, of course, the onward learning. Um, so you can keep on developing. Just briefly going through the introduction course. So it's nine modules with quite a few separate topics. And the, uh, there may be a few older students that is that are watching this and, and here with us today. Um, that haven't looked at the introduction course for a few years, the courses keep on developing. So I keep on adding new meditations, new topics, new lessons, and that really it's 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 ongoing. It doesn't remain static. So <clears throat> I'd encourage people who have already enrolled in the introduction course to go back and have a look at some of the um, the new meditations because, of course, you know I've started writing this course over 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, and things develop and change and sort of the, the consciousness of the planet and the consciousness of individuals is also changing with, so we try and keep it um, going with the flow, but still keeping the basics as well. Um, we start going, you know, the first few lessons are really about easing you into the concept, explaining what it's all about, the history of animal communication as, as we know it. Um, and then you start going much deeper and actually experiencing 
um, doing the exercises. So the, the the modules are full of exercises that you do, and then you write up assignments, and and then you get feedback. <clears throat> and halfway through, or a little bit more than halfway through, you start actually doing. Um, practice sessions where you give feedback and it's kind of assessed as part of the the work so the assignments are really easy there's a place just to upload them um janine um these days it's mainly janine that's reading through all the assignments she's an excellent teacher and mentor herself um and then i will occasionally read as well i'll, I'll go through it and and give feedback um, it's a brilliant way to ask questions. There's dis there's a discussion um, kind of area as you go through um, where you can ask questions or just give statements and other people can comment on that, the rest of the other student body as well. Great, there's always place to ask questions. Um, and it's always, you know, we encourage people, even if you you don't feel that you've got much from the exercise to give some feedback um just so just to keep the ball rolling with the with the courses what is wonderful i find we've developed this program the way everything is one place um so you have this is kind of a dashboard what the dashboard looks like this is where you'd access the the courses that you're enrolled in and then we have a um a student community as well that is private just to people enrolled in the, the courses. And then we have practice sessions as well. And I'm going to hand over to Janine um, to talk about the student community and the practice session. Janine, thanks. Thanks, Winter. So the community, um, there's different topics, as you can see on the left-hand side. Um, and then uh, students can share their experiences or introduce themselves, share experiences, um, resources, you know, if someone's read a good book um, and then, uh, you know, that's where we share the uh, practice sessions when there's a live practice session coming up or uh, a student call with winter. Then if you want help, uh, you know, if you hear of a situation and you want help from other students, um, then you can put that uh, in the help for animals, the um, animals that are missing, so there's a lot of different sections and a lot of uh, feedback. There's a, there is a lot of students who check in there regularly and it is a lovely space where you're completely safe uh, with amazing, amazing people uh, just filled with love and light and understanding and it's very, very supportive. Um, and the practice sessions, so there's several different types. So the live practice sessions, which uh, you get an email about, and then you can join the live practice session. And then those are recorded. So if you can't make that live, then you can watch the recording later. And then I give the email address of the guardian. So if you get information that's not shared during the recording, then you can write directly to the guardian. And then there's the static, uh, static, um sessions which are photos where you click on and you can choose the name and the animal and there's a photo and some questions and i don't know if you can hear my in the background she's just woken up just in time for me to come as she wants to be heard <laughs> um and um and then when you go into the intermediate uh uh, course then there's more advanced sessions for uh, for that as well so and then you can work with the guardian directly with the uh, with the intermediate sessions sorry i couldn't find my mic thanks janine and you know what i like about the um community is that we used to have a Facebook community in the in the old days and you know just with all the yeah um concern about social media this is really a safe wonderful space where you've got your own passwords and everything so um and it's really really helpful 
This is just a list, list of our mentors and where they're, they're from. Um, if you wanted to sign up um, to the introduction course with a view of going all the way to the Ubiquity University courses, um, then you're assigned to one of three, Anthea, Kate, or Eleni, as they are three very um, – experienced professional animal communicators and they've been mentors um going through my course for a long you know they've been a uh, yeah been assisting and mentoring for a very long time uh, normally the mentors are only assigned for the introduction course because once you finish the introduction course you you should be um confident enough to you know start working on yourself it doesn't mean that you can't reach out to someone else, Janine or or myself, or the other um, three mentors who are um, doing the ubiquity um, mentoring. And also, you don't have to work with the mentor. It really is up to you. It's just that you have that support in the background. Um, and if there's any questions about that later, we do have a couple of the mentors with us, as I said, when we um, – came in of course your extra support is mother nature she's going to be your main guidance and the animals that you work with they are your teachers but um when you need human teachers i'm there doing i offer one-on-one -on -one sessions for each course um for free for as, as part of the course um fees janine is there and as general student support so if there's anything bothering you she's amazing and she'll always get back to you and then trisha um she's the technical guru so if there's anything any problems with passwords or you know any technical things she's the one to to go through and she helps when people sign up and um if you've ever emailed Info at Trisha will be the one who um, responds to you. So you might have known her already. Just a bit about the intermediate course, again, guided by both of us, Janine and myself. And the intermediate course comes, it sort of brings it back to you so that you start looking at any challenges that you may have faced in the introduction course. Your introduction course goes really quite deep, more so than any other introduction to animal communication course that I've ever seen that's out there. It's really from the very basics all the way to working with missing animals, um, animals in spirit, you know, every kind of possible scenario that you could face. But then, so the intermediate course is really about doing the self-work and also experiencing how to communicate with other um beings, not necessarily animal beings, but um, trees and plants and, you know, whoever else is out there that wants to communicate. There is so much um, life out there that we are being asked to com to connect with. Um, and so there is no limit to who we can communicate with in this way. And it really is about deepening your practice as well. So really going into what does this mean to you? What do you want to do with this work? Do you want to do anything with this work? Is it just the experience and the challenge, which is also absolutely wonderful to do? And then the practitioner's course, the certification course, really it's about how to be professional and ethically, how to work with clients, how to, you know, practically set up um, your business um again it's also about self-awareness your energy and your boundaries how to how to deal with an onslaught of requests things like that all the different challenges that come when you launch yourself as a professional animal communicator we do ask you to submit um at least 24 case studies which are assessed by um myself and janine and that is to see, it's not about whether you're getting accurate information, it's more about how you've dealt with the situation. So how through animal communication or through IHC, you have assisted the situation, the humans and the animals and you know the entire 
environment, whatever needed to transform. So it really is showing. And then we ask people to do as many practice sessions as they can and pick the best ones with good follow-up feedback for that. And then you get um, a certificate to show that you've done the work and that's very useful for insurance purposes if you want to start a business. But you're also added to my list of recommended practitioners, which is on my website so that people can find you um, after you've kind of launched yourself out there. Okay. So there I've been talking for 40 minutes. <laughs> so we can carry on. I'm just going to stop the share for a moment just to uh, I can see. Um, does any if anybody wants a a short just a bathroom break, maybe we do that, just a two minute break. And then because when I'm coming back, I'm going to start going into the nitty gritty of how to actually connect. And then we're going to do the practice session with beauty. So if anybody wants um, to have a two minute break, do so now, and then we can start again. Okay. Just reading through if you, I'll just give it, people a minute before we start and then just reading through the please feel free to type any questions now if you um if you don't need a a break okay So before we start um, with the practice session, I'm going to just briefly, it's not a, a full teaching session, um, but I'm going to go through the the brief steps on, on how um, we start connecting and how to communicate, you know, sending messages and receiving messages as well effectively. And then I'm going to put up a photograph of beauty and then I'm going to guide you into that connective space. And then we're going to ask some questions. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to feel into the energy and to have your pen and paper ready so that you can just write whatever comes. And then after we finished with the, the list of questions, then Lynn is going to give you some feedback. And you will have the opportunity of writing any things that you received in the chat, but you don't have to. Um, you can keep it private. This really is um, for you to experience what it feels like to be in that connected space. Okay. All right. I'm hoping everyone is back now. It's been a couple of minutes. Janine, are you back? I'm just asking. We can. I'm here. <laughs> I did take advantage, though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And all right. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. So those of you who were with me, during when at the very start when we did the um, opening meditation you will remember us creating this heart field so that is a, a wonderful way of preparing yourself to be in the space of connection and communication and <clears throat> when we first practice this often it is we are going to need to do that meditation but when we become more familiar with that feeling of connection, you can step right into that heart space almost immediately. And sometimes we need to. Sometimes we need to intervene in a situation where the animals need a command because, you know, not even a command, a, a, um, a calming or something to 
um, help them in a dangerous situation. And then you need to step into that heart field to know what's going on and to receive guidance on how to ease that situation. But we're not there yet. Um, some of you are, but for now, I'm just going to talk about the basic steps of entering into a communication. Before we start, it's a very good idea to set an intention. So an intention would be that I am going to have a clear, concise communication with this particular animal. So that's setting your intention. You make sure your heart is clean. So during that um, opening meditation, remember breathing in that rose gold light and transforming any heaviness or pain into love. Because when we are connecting with the animal, we want him to send love to that animal being to create that bridge of connection. But this giraffe on the screen here was from the Kruger National Park. He spoke to me and my group and many people got a similar message at the time was that it's not enough to send love. We need to send clean love. And that I kind of wowed me at the time because my teachings, how I'd learned and how I'd always um, experienced it was just send love. And how I've taught it is just send love and that creates the the connection. But with all the stuff that we carry in our energy field, when we are connecting with another being, we don't want our stuff to become part of their, that we don't want them to have to feel that and try and sort it out when um, we are wanting to communicate with them. They are always connected to us. Animals do not have to meditate and clean and clear their hearts for to feel the connection of intuitive interspecies communication. It is how they live. It is how they survive. It's how the zebras know when they when the lion is in hunting mode or in relaxed, non, non-hungry mode. It is how mothers call their babies um, when there's danger. It is, it really is immediate. It's how your animal friend at home knows when you are feeling sad and need comfort or when you're feeling sick and need some healing. They are there already. It's us humans that need to remember how to get into that connected space. And the animals have helped, really helped me to understand the clean love and that heart field connection. So once we've done that, it's we always need to ask permission before we start the communication because we are we are connected we're always connected so we can communicate with any with the animals at any time but sometimes you know especially when we're practicing or when we want to really find out what's going on the animals might not be in that space to communicate about that specific issue at the time so ask permission it's all it's just about good manners um and being respectful so ask permission, may you, may I communicate with you at this time, may invite them to step into that heart field. If you get no response, and this is from, you know, today we're going to be talking, we're going to be practicing remote interspecies communication with a photograph. So how do you tell if you have permission or not? Normally it would be, um, you know, if if you're an animal's in your presence, they'll just walk out the room or turn their back to say, no, I'm not ready. But with a photograph, you have to work with your intuition to know if it's the right time or not. So normally, if you just get nothing, when you try and communicate, that often means that you don't have permission. And it might not be, it might be because you're not in a right in the right space, or they're busy doing something else. So you know, just listen to that and then try again a little bit later. One of the things, because when we're in communication with animals, it is a two-way communication. It's not just trying to receive information. A lot of the work, and especially a lot of my work that I do with wildlife, is about sending information. So asking them, 
to um, sometimes with wild animals in a human environment, we have to ask them to behave in a way that is not natural to them. You know, so don't come, you know, asking them to stay away from the fruit trees in that particular property because it's dangerous. We are have to, having to send that information. So um, positive mental images and words. So when animals receive information from us, when we send information, it's mainly through a quantum hologram or a mental image. So when we have a thought we have a mental image before that thought. So if you're just thinking about taking your dogs for a walk, they'll and you haven't even moved, they'll be there waiting for you. I'm sure you've had that experience. You are sending, a, you before you've had that thought, you have a mental image of you walking on the beach or in the park or in the forest, wherever you go for a walk. And they will pick that up. So Sending information is really about um, also being positive. So it's not saying, no, don't go to the fruit tree um, because it's dangerous. It's say, stay in your, stay in this space and you visualize where they are safe to stay in the, the forest or the mountain top and where there's lots of food. Hopefully there is food there. That is an issue. And you visualize them in a safe place staying there where they are safe. And that is the message that you want to um, send. We go into more details in the course about how do you send a message of danger? You know, there are ways and methods of doing that with um, something we call a sandwich message where you, when you show them the consequences of certain actions. actions. But it's also, it's really about um, being aware of your thoughts and the mental image around that thought. So if I tell you now not to think of a pink elephant with wings, I'm sure everybody in this Zoom room is thinking of a, a pink elephant with wings. Because the moment you say those words, we can't help it. We do not, nature does not understand the word no, it is a human concept. So I need to tell you what to think about. So think about your animal friend curled up on your lap. And there, there you have a nice, peaceful um, image and feeling. I hope this is all making sense and you're following it. So receiving information is the more difficult, that the more challenging for us humans. And this is where the practice comes in. And this is what you are going to be practicing. When you're in that connected sp space and you're asking a question, it really is important to be open to everything that comes. So just to be very aware of how you are feeling in that space. And don't even question whether it's your feeling or their feeling, just trust what comes. That's why I've asked you to all have um, paper and a pen with you because you'll write down, even if you just get a color, or a shape, or something that makes absolutely no sense to you whatsoever, write it down, because you don't know what the answer is. You may think you know, but until you've actually heard it from the animal, you're not going to get confirmation. You're not going to know you know, if that makes sense. So really, be brave and write down everything, because it's so easy to say, oh, no, that doesn't make sense, no. Um, cats don't eat cucumber. Why am I getting that they, they like cucumber? And then you'll find when we go back to the guardian, the guardian will say, oh yeah, strangest thing, my cat loves cucumber. So write down, even if it sounds crazy. Um, and it's not just, you know, the way we receive information, everybody is different. So I receive, the first thing that I normally receive from an animal when I'm connecting with them is their physical being, how, how they are feeling physically and emotionally. And then I'll get images. So I'm a very artistic, creative person. So I'll, I'll often get images. So a picture or even a movie going on in my, my mind. I very seldom get words or sounds. Sometimes I'll get a smell, like a psychic smell. Um, or a taste in my mouth, like what is your favorite food? And I'll get a taste. So some people don't get images. They just get words as if it's like a um, 
you know, a dictation that they're writing down or a download of a channeling. So just see what happens. If this is the first time you're experiencing this, just be open and don't question, just be in the space and do um, what feels right. Whenever we're asking questions, we always ask open questions. So a closed question is, um, are you feeling um, good today? And they could say yes or no, uh, you know, are you all right? Yes. Okay. So that stops, you know, but if you say, how are you feeling today? You'll get a plethora of images and feelings. Okay. When we end the communication, it's really important to give thanks. Just as we ask permission, we give thanks. We thank the animal for being with us. And it is quite important to kind of, although we're always connected, to disconnect from that particular communication. So there's few ways you can disconnect. You can see yourself in a kind of separate bubble of light to them. So kind of almost stepping out of that heart field into two separate heart fields. Um, just because otherwise you may feel um, ungrounded, you may feel like you're still with that animal when you're trying to do your daily tasks, and that's not that's not really practical. So it's really important to be grounded once you've finished doing the communication, and you might find your own way of doing that. Okay. All right. So before we start working with beauty, I'm just going to ask if everybody is understanding and feeling good about this. And perhaps you can just do a little thumbs up. Okay, great. Thank you. If there's any um, sharings, we'll go through it afterwards. Thank you. All right. So the the interesting thing with Beauty and Lily was when I asked Lynn if um, one of her animal companions would agree to be a teacher today. Um, that both of them came and both of them were insistent. And I said, and I even thought when she told me this, I said, no, but we can't have two. We can only have one because we'll only have time to have one teacher. So we need to choose who's going to be one. And then when I looked at both their photographs, I felt exactly the same way Lynn did. I said, they both want to be here. They've both got something important to share. So we're going to be asking Beauty some specific questions. And then we're going to be connecting with Lily and just on a general way, you're going to see what it feels like to be with her and see if you can receive any information. Time is going to be maybe a little bit tight, but we'll see how much we can get through in the sharing afterwards. So I'm not going to ask you to speak or share your um, information once, I, unless it's in the chat and you want to, but... Once we've finished with the questions with beauty, I'm going to ask Lynn to speak about um, beauty and cover the answers as from her perspective. And then if you have any questions in the chat, we can see if we'll have time to answer that. Okay. All right, everyone. So see how you feel, whether you want to just gaze in beauty's eyes or she's you can only see one of her eyes on the screen as we prepare to connect and to communicate with her we have asked permission for her she's volunteered to be the, the teacher she knows that there's going to be a large group of people communicating with her at one time and she's very happy with that But just in your own time, go into your heart space. 
feel that love, feel that heart field that we created at the beginning of the call. We're asking beauty to step into that field with us and just send her that absolute unconditional love. If there's any fears or doubts or anxiety, just breathe that out and see them transformed by that unconditional love. And then in your own time, you can ask permission for you to be able to enter into this communication. If you want to just observe, that's absolutely fine. But if you feel that you're starting to move get drawn into her world and feeling what she's feeling, then just start writing. So I'm going to give you a few minutes now to write down the very first thing that comes as you start connecting and communicating with beauty. Now I'm just going to gently verbalize the question. First question is, ask her to describe where she lives. And you can ask her what it looks like, how it feels, what it smells like. Ask her to show you who she lives with. Who does she live with? Ask her to show you how her body feels physically at this time. How does she feel in her body?
And now ask her to show you if there's been any recent changes in her life. What has changed in her life recently? And then ask her if she has any concerns or worries, and if so, what are they? And then our closing question is, is just an open question asking her if there's anything else she wishes to share. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes in silence just to close or finish off there.
As you start finishing off, I know it's just been a short time. Give thanks. Thank Beauty for being here with us. It's this amazing teacher. Just finish what you are writing. You may you may write more later. It feels like she does have a lot to say. So it might more information might come later. And just gently step out of that heart field separating yourself from her for this moment. Feel grounded, so put your feet firmly on the ground. Feel that joy and peace and gratitude in your heart. And then let's come back fully into the meeting. And I feel like Beauty's looking over our shoulders. Okay. Okay, Lynn, I'm going to hand over to you now um, just to just briefly go through the questions that we asked. Um, nice. I've got some photographs that you shared as well, but perhaps you can just share what came to you and how you know beauty. Those questions. Right. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you, everybody. Um, and if I don't say this, Beauty will reprimand me, but she's noted that there's some very talented animal communicators in the room, and I must please make sure I say this. So now I've said that. <laughs> You'll know who you are. Um, so where does Beauty live? Well, she lives um, at Odemoden, which is an eco-village, um, and it's very rustic. She has uh, wooden fences tied with wire. She has a... Um, little shelter which is uh, made out of of um, corrugated iron she has access to the most beautiful wetlands the most beautiful fields flowers everywhere um river to swim through <clears throat> lots of place thanks winter <clears throat> lots of place to to run she runs a lot she's the fastest little horse we have on the farm according to all her grooms <laughs> she's very fast um and she loves to run. And that's interesting because she's a, a, a very serious rescue. She was almost dead when we um, when she came to the, the rescue center where I was volunteering and she made it through the, the first night. Um, so she came with many um, injuries. So I'm sort of jumping around the questions. I hope that's okay. But, that's absolutely um, fine, yeah. Okay, thanks Winter. She came with many injuries. She had fallen, um, we think in a cart. She had injuries on her back from being put in the harness. She had hurt her pelvis. She wasn't able to um, ride at all for um, a good couple of years. Um, and then she also struggled with um, any weight on her back. And she had broken a bone in her one of her front legs. So she was in a really bad way. But she's a survivor and she rides absolutely beautifully. Um, she would probably have told you oh these are these are her friends so she lives in a in a group of three other horses but she has um there is a herd of about 40 horses which live on the same property and she does run free with them um sometimes as well and she visits gets visited by many of them um the one that she's necking with there that is her very best friend a little uh welsh pony retired very old she looks after him he's often um sitting down he has uh, an injured tendon but she absolutely adores him. He absolutely adores her. And they go everywhere together. And her leader of her little mini herd is in the left-hand picture there. Um, Dream, she is an Appaloosa and um, very much a leader and a very, very good friend to Beauty. And then not turning the picture, she has a third very big horse, Dare, um, who is a younger um, gelding who she absolutely adores as well. She loves riding with him. His, enormous he's about twice her size um 
and an absolute sweetheart. So she's probably going to tell you about those. And she may also mention birds. She loves birds. She has birds in her stable, nesting, little baby birds, and they learn to fly and they bash into things around her stable and she just looks after them all. She has peacock friends and she has a cat, um, a good friend who's a cat. Um, then she has my dogs who visit and she absolutely loves them too. So she may have shown you all of those. Um, yeah, because I think she regards all of those as, as her friends. Um, in terms of uh, recent changes, um, she she has just begun jumping. And um, we didn't ever think she'd be able to, and she's absolutely loving it. And for her, I think she's probably going to have told you that she is leaping over little baby jumps. She is now cantering them, and we're having so much fun. And she's incredibly impressed with herself. And that's only been a, she's been learning to jump for about a year. And she's mastered the cantering jumping only in the last kind of two weeks. And she just flies. She is a, she's loving it, and her legs are managing, which is so exciting. So, that probably would have also come through. Um, and then I think there's just, Winter, just one or two extra things I thought I would mention in case they came through because when I was sitting while you were all communicating, these came to me. So I think she was trying to tell you about it. We call her Florence Nightingale because she is the healer um, in our, on our, uh, at our stables. She heals um, and supports horses that are ill, horses that are worried, horses that are injured. Um, so we call her Florence Nightingale when any ever anyone needs support um, where their animal is sick. Um, and that's at the stables or those of us with animals at home. So she's very much a healer. Um, and she also loves chatting in conversation. So if you are chatting with a friend, she will come and stand there and take part in the conversation. She loves conversation. So she is chatty and Winter's quite right. She has lots to say, always. She's never going to be short of words, <laughs> unlike some of my other animals. <laughs> um, but she absolutely, she has just, she just communicates and she loves chatting, loves conversation. If I'm away, she actually draws one of our friends um, to the stables to have conversations so that she can be part of a conversation. So, um. And then in terms of concerns, she may well have shown you that there is possibility that they may have to close the stables and she may have to move. So she may be picking up on that. She is very worried about that, I know. Um, she may not have communicated that. but And she probably also told you that I'm tired and overworked because I think <laughs> she worries about that. <laughs> and otherwise, um, that was all that specifically came to me. Um, Winter, anything else you'd like me to to mention? Um, I think one one just the place. So, so she's in Cape Town because that's where you live. Why don't we clarified Cape Town, South Africa, and you would have got a feel from that with the mountain in the in the background. Um, someone's asking about her. Was it her oh. left front leg that was broken? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Was. Sorry, I meant to say how okay. it was. So that does sometimes um it just needs a bit of extra support. Um and mm. her so she has a, a gash on the one leg and she has a broken bone on the other, um, had a broken bone on the other, which wasn't dealt with when before we rescued her. Um and she has uh, problems across her pelvis. So you may have sensed pain or discomfort, hopefully not too much pain, but just a kind of a niggle, a stiffness, specifically stiffness, I think. Um, in her hind quarters, so you may um, have ex have experienced that. Um, in. And also, she was telling me she may be wet because she loves to swim, and I think she went swimming this afternoon. So you may have got a very damp and wet feeling, which is because she was swimming in the river, and she huh. should be coming in for her supper in the next twenty minutes or so. So <laughs> she may well be very wet. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks. Thanks, Lynn. If anybody has anything that they want to confirm, please write it in the chat. You're really welcome to. Um, Lynn, I was, I was also getting her ankles, like her front, her front ankles just feel like they could get a bit worn now and again. Yes, yes. 
over all her generally her legs okay. have to have to be yeah. yeah 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 because she's just yeah, okay she's and bad. wonderful and the uh, Casey's saying I see my internet connection is unstable um she kept referencing the the horizon and the color orange and yes. that may well be <laughs> there <Yes. laughs> absolutely because she has a beautiful view of the horizon there we go and she loves her sunsets that's when i'm there mostly lately um so she does she absolutely loves that and she just we spend long time together at sunset um and then often um often i'll also and everyone as as um winter will tell you gets things differently but i often also get colors um casey when they they kind of mean something. So sometimes the orange could be you know, happiness or yeah, warmth, um, for example. Um, hey. Yes, there have been. Um, she has lost um, three of her stable, uh, her herd members recently from that have died. Um, okay. Uh, yes so she doesn't stay oh. with them they are part of the bigger herd and she definitely was very involved there okay. uh, yes loves sheep she loves sheep i forgot to say that on the way <laughs> uh, on the other side of the field and when she goes into the field in the afternoons she um is near the sheep and if i ever ride her past the sheep she stops to talk to them she loves sheep whereas my other horse absolutely can't stand them so <laughs> Wonderful. Well done. Um, Lana is saying it, feel, it felt like she's concerned about losing connection with her humans that tend to her. Yes. That would be if she does, if they do close. Yeah. Yeah. And she does. She loves being with the people that she's with. Okay. Yeah. In terms um, of being pregnant, she's not pregnant. Mm. There is a male um, that has just been rescued who is pregnant, who arrived pregnant. So... She could be telling you about that, um, mm -hmm. baby, because we have been chatting about that. So that's interesting, Christine. I know you you think you might have made that up, but because there's a pregnant, a new, a rescue who she'd relate to because she was a rescue that's turned up pregnant, that that you would have been picking that up. So if you had more time, you could go in and feel deeper into that. So when we do practicing um, with the students, we go in and see, you know, is why did that come to you? So um, well done that you got that because there is relevance yeah. to it. And she would have been an amazing mother. She would have. Um, mm. But when rescues from certain rescue places, you know, you, you obviously can't breed um, deliberately with them. Um, she, she can't smell the ocean, but she has told us in a previous communication that she does want to go there. She wants to go for a ride on the beach. And I'm a marine scientist. So <laughs> you're picking up on all yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, that's... you know, sorry, Lynn, she might, she might well be able to smell the ocean because it's not that far away from the ocean where she is. When there's so... fog, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you, yeah, just because... You might not be able to smell the ocean from there. That doesn't mean that she can't. <laughs> but, that, but that connection with the ocean is is yeah. brilliant with your marine work. Um, Her pony friend uh, is a little boy, a little golding. Uh, well, okay. Casey's getting chain and a wind, a chain and I, wind as well. Okay, yes. Casey, yes, because her... Um, Things do rattle in the wind, um, so she has a chain on her gate, but um, her her uh, kind of sh uh, the shade cloth behind her stable um, has blown in the wind recently. We had a very bad storm, and it's flapping and it's busy being fixed, but they haven't quite got there yet. So yes, um, she's worried about the other horses getting older. Yes, she is. She certainly is. Um, her best friend is getting very old. Okay. Thank you. Wow, that's brilliant work, everybody who shared. And I'm sure some of you may not have felt comfortable sharing, and that's absolutely fine. 
Um, but I hope you've all had a bit of a, you know, just experience of, of that. Um, Barbara is asking here, she's worried about stormy weather. Um, she's not really worried for herself, but her um, the tall gelding that lives with her is terrified in storms. Um, so she spends her time calming him down when there's a big uh, storm. And um, there's been lots of big storms there recently in over the last couple of months. It's it's certainly it's called the Cape of Storms, isn't it? And it's really and living up to its name. Very stormy we winter. Very mm, stormy. Mm, mm, mm. And she okay. does love being free. She just runs and runs. So yes, Candace, she loves her freedom. Uh, wow. That's wonderful. Thank you, everyone. That's that's absolutely brilliant. So um I think what thank you, Lynn, as well, and thank you, Beauty. That was really a that was such a a great experience. So I am going to, oh, thank you, Michelle. I think that, yeah, there's a reason why she, both of them wanted to communicate, I think. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there she is. So let us move on to Lily. Okay. So let's stay in this feeling of connection, if you can. I might ask you all just to switch your videos off um, while we're connecting. I can also switch my video off. Okay, so if you need some guidance, just take yourself back into that heart field. We ask permission. And we're not going to ask any specific questions here with Lily. I just want you to feel what it's like to be with her, to feel her energy. And you can just ask her if she wants to share anything with you. If you need to ask with a question, start with a question, just ask her if there's anything she'd like to share with you today.
And slowly thank Lily for being here. Just finishing off what you're writing, sensing, feeling. And very gently just withdraw your energy back to yourself. Feel grounded, your feet firmly on the ground. And again, if you feel the need, you can go back to Lily and communicate with her again. Okay, Lynn, I'm going to ask you to tell us about Lily. <clears throat> yeah. So it was actually so interesting when, um, so when we were getting ready this afternoon, Lily came to visit us at the computer and she's now in her little room, which is next door to my study. So I snuck there when you were just preparing and I just said you are, they're about to communicate with you because she, she obviously knew you were going to chat. And then once she started, I snuck back to look at her and she just closed her eyes and she lay like kind of in a bundle, closed her eyes and she started just purring and breathing deeply. So she was really just thoroughly enjoying chatting. Um, Lily is a, a rescue. She was found in a drain and she had been trapped there for several days. So she spent about five days or more in a drain and was eventually be, uh, taken out. Uh, rescued by a lady actually the lady who was going to work every day her name was Lily and um, she reported her to the animal authorities and they rescued her and she was still a little kitten then um, so she had a re very traumatic um, start um, she is not a cat that likes to kind of come and sit on top of you but she loves to be snuggled so in her own space um, and she purrs a lot as winter discovered today <laughs> um, um she also loves to watch birds um she doesn't kill them she only killed them in the very beginning but she just loves to watch them she's fascinated with birds and um she visits the next door garden where they don't there aren't any dogs um and spends the day just watching the birds lying looking at she loves flowers she loves butterflies she loves birds um yeah and i'm not really sure what else i should tell you if you want to take a few questions then I can maybe start. what kind of home she lives so in she, if people want to yes ask she questions lives, she lives in um a little a, ho a little house um with a very big playful dog called charlie who she is not so sure she's mad about um, but she's getting better with him <laughs> and a little tiny little dog who's 13 um, who she absolutely adores candy and um, they are inseparable so she has her own little room I mean she can come anywhere in the house but she has a specific room that she's kind of made her own um, and she spends also a lot of time in my study um, and yeah you know, comes to visit while I'm working at my desk and she has yeah you know, she has a nice garden and a big tree, which she may also show you, right outside her window. And um, she has in the past mentioned that she loves to just lie on her on her blankets, looking through the window at this tree where there are birds and, yeah. Okay. And oh. um, physical health, is she healthy, happy? Very healthy. Oh, she was. Um, she really, she almost died several times from pneumonia after she'd been in that drain for so long. So she was touch and go for several weeks. Um, and so she has, and that was a lung infection, very, very bad one. But since then, she's had nothing, um, nothing wrong with her at all. She's very agile. Yeah. 
she always jumps up to get in the the window um prefers to do that than come than, than to come in a door <laughs> so she's very good at jumping she's also very good at tight walking on a very thin little fence with spikes and she never gets spiked mm. so, yeah and what is her kind of role in your family do you feel like her um, I think she's the calming one. So she's mm. she's got this lovely calm energy. Um, and she just brings her presence and just calms everybody. Mm. So which is necessary when you have a Charlie in your life, like we do, the big dog. <laughs> <laughs> but she was there before him. Um, but she's okay. very, very calming and soothing and she's just she's incredibly loving. Yeah. Wonderful. She has a lot of humor. Yeah, well, she does have, she actually does have a sense of humor. She will go, when Charlie is fascinated with her, she'll go into the bathroom and then she'll hide on top of the wash basket. And as he comes past, she'll pounce at him. <laughs> 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 and then he runs. And she just loves that. And then she kind okay. of, oh. she does have a lot of humor. And she okay. plays. What? She has lots of toys. She plays with her toys. She loves catnip. Um, she is, she's a strong, strong cat and she is very, very wise. Yes. Okay. She is a wise mentor. She loves yeah. teeth. Well, we couldn't leave her out. <laughs> ah. mm. And acceptance and tolerance. Thank you. A lot of tenderness. Thank you. <clears throat> wow. It's amazing. A big window with a wooden frame. Is that the one where the tree is? Yeah. Um, it hasn't got a wooden frame, but it is a big window, a very big window. Yeah. Um, but there, yeah, there is um the tree is big outside a window. Okay. Wonderful. She does love to look out of it. She does well done. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Deep wisdom, quietly confident. Yeah. Not to be afraid to go deep into connection, into a space of pure potential and not to be afraid. Oh, that's Thank wonderful. you, Kate. Yeah. Mm. Yes, she does love grass. Um, she lies all over the grass next door, which doesn't have dogs on it. She okay. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you, everyone, and um, thank you, Lily. It's a very special experience. I hope everyone felt the difference between, you know, the the actual way we communicate with with all species is the same, the method is the same, but the feelings and the information obviously is different. So I hope everyone could feel the difference between that very horse energy and and the cat energy. And also the difference in when you almost put on the spot to ask specific questions and when it's also just flows. So that's sometimes my students feel very um, fearful around asking specific questions. And then I say, but just start by flowing and then often the answers to the questions will come in that, in that space of flow. So I hope that worked for everyone. Getting your feedback. We've got a little bit of time for some general questions. We've got about 15 minutes left. Um, if anyone wants to write in the chat or raise your hand, um, whether it's about the course or about the communications. Um, I'm going to stop sharing here just for now so that I can see any raised hands, questions. Okay. I must have done a very good um, job of explaining everything because there's no questions at all, it seems. <laughs> You're okay. a <prime> winter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I was just saying to Jean, it's 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 been a long time since I did one of these webinars. So um I'm I'm pleased it's it's gone so well. It seems feels like it's gone so well anyway. Um, 
Karina's got something about Lily said to look inside, go look inside. Quiet is so needed. Um, likes to think a lot and be a philosopher. Definitely. We can receive such wisdom from our animal friends as well. You know, um, it's not all just about how they're feeling and their environment. And sometimes the downloads that we get can be completely inspiring. Um, amazing guidance. I mean, they. For me, I feel like our domestic animals are our link with with the wild and our wild nature, and and a link directly to the divine for inspiration and guidance. So sometimes our animal friends, whether they're still in physical form or in spirit, can be our spirit guides and our teachers. So. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'll just um, share a, a very last, um, just this very last slide that um, if you want to learn more and look at all the courses that we do have on offer, just go to learn.animaltalkafrica.com. Maybe, um, Janine, you could put it in the chat. We do have um, a lot of free webinars and uh, past webinars and replays. So a lot of free um, information there where you can actually, where there's more tuition as well in about specific situations like um, behavior, transforming behavior. Um, when missing animals, there's, there's a beautiful free webinar on um, heart for missing animals. So, Go and have an explore, and when you when you sign up to the learn site, you um, there's a there's also the Wild Heart community that's open to you for free. That is um, really uh, focuses on the virtual wildlife journeys that I have started doing, um, uh, and. If you look there, you'll also get information about upcoming ones. And of course, of course sign up for my newsletter, et cetera, et cetera, if you haven't already. Um, I couldn't resist putting in this photograph, which is um, a rescue horse at a place called Tomro Haven in Cape Town. Um, and they used, they were situated right at near Cape Point Nature Reserve and at the troop of baboons would often go and visit. And um, with my work with baboons, baboons are under such such um, threat at the moment in South Africa. They're really being harassed. Um, and this is just such a beautiful, peaceful um, photograph of how how this interspecies peace can be achieved um, if the humans get out the way and and are peaceful themselves. Janine, you've got your hand up. Yeah. Uh, there was just a question from Casey. Um, shall mm. I read it out? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, I closed the chat. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, so she just said um, it almost felt as though she didn't want to stop chatting. So I'm assuming that was Lily. How do you navigate that with an animal going forward? Well, I suppose, you know, in this situation, we only had very limited time. But if you are working, um, if your intention is to communicate with that particular animal, make sure you've got the time. So if they don't want to chat, um, if they don't, if they want to carry on chatting, just give them that space. If you have something that you have to do and you can't be in that communication space, make a time later to to connect in and see um because they will it's you know it's just that opportunity of flow and and also maybe you need to stay in that space for longer so if you're feeling oh i have to rush somewhere else see how important it is whether you do need to rush somewhere else or you can stay with the animal that you're connecting with so just navigate that intuitively um because there's a reason that she's wanting to talk with you, Casey. Um, I felt very much that with with beauty. I felt like she wanted to say more and more. Um, and for me, Lily was um, happy to be 
to be with us for that short time as well. So, um, another, another question as well. Um, yes. In in um, is there uh, one of the courses covering um, accompanying animals in the process of dying? Uh, there is when um, it's quite an old um, well. In the main course, in the introduction course, we do talk about that. We work through that um, about, you know, also having to make decisions about euthanasia um, and making sure the animal is involved in that decision making, your animal friends. And also, yeah, the, the, the processes. So the introduction course definitely covers that. And I think we did a webinar on that as well. Um, a few years ago, so, so that will be up on the course site as well. If it's not a free one, then it's probably a, just like ten dollars or something. Um, but I think it might be a free one. Okay, right. Okay, D. You said the the learn link is not working. Um, let me. I'll I'll go to the actual page and I'll copy the link over directly. Yeah. I think sometimes if you put the www in, it doesn't seem to work for some reason. But if you just put the HTTPS, it does. The learn.animaltalkafrica without the www. So, yeah, if you can just recheck that, Janine. There we go. That one works, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. And I also put the, um, the Ubiquity University link in further up as well. I've put it in. Yeah. Twice, so yeah, I should see it. Great, thank you. And what I'll do is I am going to post this on the course site page. So this will be available for everybody to reconnect with. And obviously, if people haven't managed to make it live. Um, thank you, Christine. And I think what I'd like to do, I had planned to just end with a short closing um, meditation. If if you've got time and you want to just sit for um Another few minutes, let's close off. And to say thank you to everybody for being here. Okay, so once again, you can either rest your eyes on the screen. It's just a photoshopped image of the lion and the connection, the heart connection. Or close your eyes. Breathing in that rose gold light, feeling centered, feeling connected, feeling grounded with Mother Earth, supporting you in every way. We give thanks in this space for all our animal friends that are helping us on this journey, specifically for Beauty and Lily for being here, as well as Lynn, their guardian. And let us feel and see them all being safe in their spaces, especially Beauty with her friends at Odemolin village in Cape Town. Let us see the freedom continue, the love continue, the sense of space and safety continue for all the beings who live on that very special piece of land, one of the few natural areas in that busy city. Let us see that space thriving in every way, for nature, with nature. Take a deep breath in and Just hold that vision and then 
let it go. And anything that you need help and assistance with, just ask Mother Nature for that help. Visualize the positive outcomes and release it into that space, that heart field where miracles happen, where all life creates the possibilities. We focus on the positive. We can co-manifest those situations, those transformations. As we receive guidance from the animals, from nature, we give thanks and as I have you with me now, let us all just commit to listening, to listening with our hearts to nature, taking that quiet time for yourself and for all other beings that we share this planet with. Let us see positive transformation wherever we go. Acknowledging the pain and then focusing on the joy, creating the balance. Knowing we can assist and asking to be shown where we can best assist at this time. Taking a deep breath in. Slowly breathe out. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes as we come back together to, to end this gathering. Thank you, everybody. I gave you a bit of a taste of the heart work, heart energy, achieving real transformation. And um, some of you have been on my heart journeys. I'll let you know when there is another one. Um, Janine and I are planning on hosting um, a mini course in November, a heart mini course, which combines animal communication, interspecies communication with transformation work. So actually receiving guidance from the animals and nature and the environment to help transform a situation, whatever is needed to be transformed. And it's a very specific way of working with nature to um, co-create positivity and see it manifest in, in reality. Um, and it's, it's something that I've worked with a lot, especially with my environmental and uh, wildlife work. So in the course, you'll um, be shown some examples, you'll be shown the method, and you'll also be um, given the opportunity to work on anything that you are concerned with as well. All right. So the, the mini course is a combination of two... Um, live webinar situations like this um, on two Saturdays and then some sort of assignment work to do in the week between. So it's it's not quite self-paced, but um, it has a little bit of everything in it. Okay. All right. Uh, it's not heartworm, D. It's a heart work so w-a-r-o-k w-o-r-k okay hard work <laughs> i don't know if that was a typo or if you didn't hear me properly <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay all right Dee. um it's a mini course that we we did have um up for a for a while um so that people could do the replay, but we do, we're redoing it. So we've um, taken the, the mini course down for now until, so we, that was getting a bit old. So we wanted to do a, a new one. 
So look out for that. If you signed up for the newsletter, you'll get information about that. Okay. Okay. So I think that's that's it. The two hours went very, very quickly. And thank you so much for Janine for holding that space as always. And thank you to Lynn. And of course, Beauty and um, Beauty and Lily. And everyone who was involved. I think the baboons were involved, everyone. I heard the Hardy Dars crying overhead as well. Um, as it's the sun setting here. All right. And thank you to the mentors who showed up holding the space as well. Um, very grateful for you. Um, they are all voluntary and they, you know, they're mentoring people because of their their passion and dedication to this work. So thank you so much. Okay. All right. Until next time, I hope to see you. Um but and probably not not often in person nowadays, but certainly um, in a gathering like this again. So thank you everyone for your time and your and your energy. Thank you. Okay. Bye everybody. Thank you. <laughs>